Hey guys, CNOR Summary Line Ralph and Joe, and today we're going to take a look at the historic La Plume Freight Depot, and we're also going to be documenting from mile post 146 to mile post 145. Mile post 146 being the La Plume Freight Depot, and 145 being Benton Road overpass. So here we go. The La Plume Freight Depot was built in 1915 to serve the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad and Freight Service. And the depot itself served a lot of freight trains throughout its time in revenue service. It served all the way up to the Canadian Pacific after the last use of the depot was sometime in the 90s. Now the depot itself is still intact. I don't think it's used anymore. Um, unfortunately, I haven't seen anyone up here since like 2021 or even 2022. So I think, uh, I think the depot has been abandoned. It's kind of sad, but I figure we'll take a look around. Yeah, you know, we'll take a look around this side. And then uh, when we come up here for the actual video documentation of the depot only, we'll have a lot more information for you. So like I said, 1915, it was built for freight service, served the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad, all the way up to the merge, all the way up to the merger of the Erie Lackawanna Railroad and then all the way up to the Delaware and Hudson, and then finally Canadian Pacific. So you see we got our La Plume signs here, which I think are pretty cool to have. This definitely represents some important history of the railroad. I definitely think it's very, very cool that we still have history hiding in plain sight. So here we go. So the loading track is still here. We're going to take a look at that first because I, I found something else pretty interesting that you guys might like. A lot of people are saying, oh, keep your eyes peeled for the old DLW steel mile markers. Um, and it turns out I did find one up here. So here's the loading track. It's still intact. Still serves. It doesn't serve anymore, unfortunately, because they, they ripped up the rest of it. But you can see some of the old rails are still here which I think is pretty cool. So, yeah, you can see the old rails are still here. Fortunately, no longer serving. Um, now, interestingly enough, it was triple tracked up here at one point. Um, the freight line was obviously right here, and then the switch would have been over there. And as you can see here, there was a third track. That's right, there was a third track along here where the Dalton siding is today. This is triple tracked. So that's even more interesting. And then once the Erie Lackawanna took over, they ripped up the third track and just left it double tracked. And then, yeah, and then once CP made their last serving of the depot, the loading track was ripped up. So as you can see here, we got a bunch of old ties. I'm not exactly sure if these are from the 1910s or the 1920s. I'm going to say either one. Um, and it looks like there could be a lot of good remnants hiding over there. Um, so I don't know if these are remnants of the freight line or if they are remnants of this track here. I have no clue. But there they are. The old ties are still sitting. They've been uncovered after many, many years. So a little further up this way here, I had discovered another one of the DLW's famous steel mile markers. I was not expecting to find one up here at La Plume because uh, it was either Conrail or Canadian Pacific or it could have been the Delaware and Hudson that ended up ripping out the steel mile markers and putting these ones in instead. So. I think it was CP that did that because these look like CP mile markers. So anyway, right here is another steel mile marker. That's right. Another one of the steel mile markers of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. Very cool to see this one still hiding here. I think these are incredible. So yeah, there it is still hiding. Unfortunately, the number plates are missing. I don't know if somebody collected them or if they just fell off. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to get started here. 
we're going to begin the documentation to CP660 or DL&W 145. So, so you can see here, we are on the passenger line. And up ahead, we got the got these signals. And there used to be searchlights here back then, even during the DL&W days. There used to be searchlight and semaphore signals here. So, it's pretty cool to know that, isn't it? We're on all welded rails, so it's nice and smooth. There, like I said, there's all the old ties. Like I've been saying, this track was built between 1912 and 1915. And this is to replace the original route of the DL&W Phoebe Snow. Because if you... Uh, on these tracks here, the curves aren't so sharp. So passenger trains were able to get up to speeds of 80 miles an hour and freight trains could go as fast as 60 miles an hour. So definitely, definitely good speed along here. Even today, you can go up to 40 miles an hour on this part. Looks like over there, we got some more old DL&W ties. Um, there are a lot of them scattered about the tracks here because a lot of the ties have been replaced. Even in more recent years, ties have been replaced. You can even see some new ones there. They're gonna be going in to replace these DLW ones. So definitely something interesting to think about here. You know, when we're looking at the old remnants of the tracks. As you can see here, we got the automatic switch for the Dalton siding. This is the north end. You can see here, this is pretty cool to see, isn't it? That is your north end switch. So it's definitely very modern. Um, we're gonna take a look on these rails here, see if we can get some dates. Let's see here. All right, looks like we're gonna have to look on the other side, find one. 136 REVT Everaz USA, 2008. It's a relatively modern rail. Even here, this is this is really modern rail. I think this is 2018, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take a look here. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit hard to tell. Looks like we can't see it. So we're gonna have to look on the other side. Yeah, so it looks like this one here, this one's, oh yeah, here we go, Never mind. Look at that guys, 2018. That is relatively new rail. I think it's Steelton if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, even here, looks like it's 2018 rail. Yep. So, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna go around the switch here. See if we can get a date on the rails for you. So. one thirty six ten cc Beth Steelton 2000. So it seems like the switch here is put in between 1999 and 2000. So still relatively modern, even for being put in like 20 years ago. And the switch motor is from 1998, General Railway Supply. So definitely very, very interesting. Here, it looks like, looks like the siding has seen some very recent use for when we got the train meet. You can see the rails are almost mirrored smooth. So they're definitely very, very smooth. You know, which is very, which is quite surprising being that this isn't used very often. Looks like we might have another date here. Let's see, we got another date. It looks like it's on the other side. Yep, 2002. All right, so definitely, very, definitely modern rail on the siding. It's all 2001, 2002. And up here we're looking at 70s rail and sometimes even 30s if you look at the right spot. So like I said, this is definitely wide enough for three spans. This was once triple tracked, like I said before. Um, yeah. 
you can see here we even got Darth Vader signals here. They definitely replaced those as well. Which is kind of unfortunate because I love the old searchlights. They did an absolute fantastic job. I wish they were still around to this day. So, anyway, like I said, um, you know, we're going to uh, show you guys around. We got some, looks like we got some 1930s plates here. Um, yeah, it looks like we got rail from 2014 or 2015. Let's see. Yep, Steelton 2018. All right, so we got some 136 there from 2018. So that's even cooler than I thought. We got some old DLW ties here. And as you guys can see, they had to blast away a lot of the rock face just to be able to put the three tracks in here. So you can see this is all slate that they've been blasting. This area is pretty well known for the slate that's here. It's definitely a ton of it. That's the same thing over here. And rail wise, I'm not exactly sure what dates we have, but we are gonna take a look on the main line here, see if we can get you guys a couple dates. So I think that'll be pretty cool. 13225RECC USS Illinois 1980. So we got 1980 on this rail here. We're going to take a look on the east rail here. 1972, Algoma, Canada. All right, so we definitely got some pretty old rail here on this part of the line. And further up, we had rail from like 1937. So that's even older. So you guys can see here, these rock faces go up to about, I'd say probably about 50 to 60 feet in height. Cause before the DLW put this track in here, this was all just mountains. And then in 1911, the DLW started blasting out the mountains here. And this is when the new tracks were put in. The current Clarkson and Halstead cutoff. And you can see here, here's the Dalton siding in place of the third main. So it seems like there were two passenger mains and then a freight line and then a freight line right over here. So this is the main passenger line. And then the second passenger line would have been where the siding is today. You know, which is really interesting that on this stretch of track, we have three tracks. It's definitely a very cool part. Um, and right up there is the right of way for the telegraph poles. And then right here, it looks like we got a, looks like we got a bridge that was taken out here. Pretty sure this is, pretty sure this is part of Four Road. I'm not sure, but well, not Four Road. Um, Sunset Drive, I think. This bridge was taken out, I think, in the 80s or 90s, or maybe the 2000s. Um, not much is known about the old bridge here, but you can see where they've been doing a lot of blasting, you know, to get rid of it. So definitely very interesting to see that. And right here is the right of way for the telegraph poles, which unfortunately some have fallen. So we're not, we don't really get to see much of those remnants anymore. Um, but it's still pretty interesting to take a look at the old right of way, because it does share a lot of history. Looks like we got some, um, not exactly sure what we got hiding there. It looks like a part of an old post or something. Old concrete post. Right over here we got um, a lot of fallen trees due to storms and weather damage. So you can see here, like I said, this is the old right of way for the telegraph poles, which 
you can see one is still standing there. One is still standing. So definitely, uh, definitely keep your eyes peeled for them. So we got some old rail over there. They just cut up and replaced. This rail here looks to be pretty new. So we're gonna take a look at it and see if we can get a date. Yeah, 2012. Yeah, 2012, 136, and then a little further down, it switches over to 2013, so a year newer. Now, I'm not exactly sure what was here, but I know this is the old access road right of way for the telegraph poles. And then I believe this is also a main access road from Maple Road. So there was another way that servicemen could get down to the tracks, you know, if they needed to do work or something, you know, they'd be able to do it like that. 2013. Now they have been doing a lot of work up here recently. Um, most of the old joints on the siding, they've been removed and welded. It's kind of unfortunate because it's nice when you got the jointed rail. Um, yeah, I'm sure you guys can see here. This is a relatively old line. Um, 1900s is still relatively old. Um, yeah, you guys, I'm sure you guys can see this. You're like, wow, this is very historical. You know, and definitely, definitely something to think about. You know, the marvels of engineering how the DL&W engineered this line here to allow passenger trains to go up to speeds of 80 miles an hour. 80 miles an hour. Passengers could get to Buffalo twice as fast using this track along with the Pocono Main. So, yeah, definitely very interesting. You guys can see here um, yeah, and over there, it looks like there's some, uh, it's a really steep embankment, goes down into the woods, and, uh, sometimes people hunt down there, but, um, federal law prohibits them from hunting close to the tracks, because a stray bullet could accidentally hit a freight train, and that wouldn't be good. On this side here where the freight line is, you can see there are some remnants left. Um, there are some old ties that are thrown off to the side of the tracks, which is relatively interesting. Um, I'm sure you guys can see that here. Like I said, there's a very steep embankment over here. You can see there's a creek down there. Yeah, it's a pretty cool spot. Now, unfortunately, some of the roadbed had eroded a little bit. Um, it's eroded on both sides of the tracks, um, which is kind of different because usually you don't see roadbeds eroding like that. But it's been a while since this was reballasted, but it's still pretty good. You know, there haven't been any accidents at all. Let's knock on wood. Let's hope it stays that way. So it looks like here we're going to be approaching a layback point. And this is where trains have to stop, you know, in regulation with neighborhoods. Because a lot of people live close to the tracks. And people don't want to have freight trains being stopped outside their houses and causing a ruckus. So definitely, definitely something to think about there. We're gonna take a look on this rail, see if we can find another date. Nineteen eighty. So we got nineteen eighty on both rails here. So at the time, this would have been the Delaware and Hudson or Conrail that upgraded this. 
It's either Delaware and Hudson or Conrail. I don't know when Conrail abandoned this line. But uh, I'm going to say for sure sometime back in the 80s. Definitely see the rock face here. This goes into a wooded area. It's definitely a marvel of engineering, guys. Definitely a marvel of engineering. The way they blasted these mountains out in not even a year to put the new tracks in, speed up passenger service. How cool is that? See here, the rails are pretty shiny. And this is probably about as shiny as the DLMW would have been back then. So it's kind of accurate in a way. And over here we got uh, another right away for telegraph poles. So, yeah, there's the northbound layback point here. So this is where northbound trains where they have to stop due to the fact that uh, there's regulations where they can't stop in front of people's houses. How about that? There's still a bunch of old ties over here. Kind of. Kind of have to be expected. But the rock faces here, they're just something to marvel at. And on some of these rocks here, you can even see where they've been drilling, where they've drilled the holes to put the dynamite in in order to blast them out. So definitely pretty cool that we still get to see this today. This is definitely very interesting. So... Yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys can see this okay. This is the um this is the old rock face. I don't know if you guys can see where they've been drilling or not, but I can kind of see where they were drilling, which is pretty cool. And these rocks go back to well, well, well over a hundred years. That is just incredible. Just how old these rocks really are. And in fact, these rocks go back thousands of years. Because in Christian, in our Christianity, the earth is believed to be six to 10,000 years old. You can see here a lot of the old rock faces have pretty much eroded. Um, it's not really too much scenery here other than the rock faces and the tracks themselves. We're going to see if we can get another date here on these rails. Yeah, it looks like we got one here. Yeah, it looks like we got... 132 RECC Beth Lackawanna 1974. So, this one here I think is 1973, if I'm not mistaken. I do remember getting dates on these. Nope, 1980s still. Okay. Alright, so the left rail here is still 1980. Um, it's definitely pretty interesting because, um, like I said before, these tracks have been upgraded a lot through the years. And the first possible upgrade the DL&W did when they upgraded this track for heavier passenger trains, they upgraded the rails to 130 pounds per yard in 1925. And 130 RE was a pretty common size. Sadly, there's no remnants of that rail left. Um, it's pretty sad, actually. Um, so yeah, it's all 132, 136, and even, even at times you might find 141 if you're lucky, or 140. So yeah, like I said, there's still a bunch of old ties. You know, there's been a bunch of them thrown off to the side of the tracks. A lot of these ties have actually been replaced, which is pretty interesting because not only 
where the tracks, not only were they built for these types of trains, they were completely built to withstand heavy weight. Ties were completely upgraded and the DLMW was just a marvel of its time. And then its rival railroad, the Erie Railroad, they weren't so lucky. They couldn't get their tracks as heavy as the DLMW did. The LMW, they got as high as 131 pounds per yard. The Erie Railroad, they probably couldn't get heavier than 100 and 112 pounds per yard at the heaviest. So you can see here, there's some beautiful scenery. A lot of us don't know about it because this is really the first documentation to prove that the DLMW I can see here we got some man-made walls. I don't know if the railroad put them up or if uh, some private dude did. Now it looks like we're starting to smell some fresh metal here. So it seems like they were doing work up here on this part of the line. Definitely got a whiff of the fresh metal smell. I think it's pretty cool. See, like I said, this is a pretty cool spot. I really like this. It's quiet and it's peaceful. And it's very enjoyable. So we're gonna take a look here, see if we can get another date. I don't know if we're gonna get one on this side or not, but we're gonna take a look. Yeah, it looks like it's on the other side. Yeah, guys, it's on the other side here, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at this. 1973. All right, so we got rail from 1973 and 2008. And uh, if we look further on here, uh, we're gonna notice we got some even older rail. This is from 1938, I believe. Yep. Look at that, guys. ESCO Lackawanna. 1937. All right, 1937. So definitely some very old rail here. It's quite shocking how old these rails actually get. And here it looks like we got some 80s rail. Yeah, 1987, looks like we got, yep, right there guys, 1987. How cool is that? All right, hopefully you guys can see this here. We're at CP660, we're at Benton Road officially. This is an incredible documentation. There was lots of history to be seen. Lots of old remnants. Okay, here we are at the old overpass. So this is definitely very cool. Um, like I said, if you guys want to see more content like this, just click the subscribe button. Leave some comments down below what you think. Now, like I said, as we keep, as we keep making new videos, we're gonna keep you guys posted. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. This is part two of the DLNW Clark Summit Halstead Cutoff Video Documentation Series, where we went from 659 to CP660. Part one, we went from 661 to 660. As you can see, we're right where we left off. Just came from the other way. And uh, see you next time.